And with us today is Andy Taroni, who is running for state representative in House District 53A, which covers uh, Southern Maplewood, uh, part of Wo uh, was it part of Woodbury, and yes, uh, part of Oakdale and all of Landfall. So with us is Andy, and thank you very much for joining us on North Star Oasis. Thank you for having me, Jeff. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, again, about, about the district too, it's, uh, it's a little convoluted because it's uh, the western part of uh, uh, Woodbury and then just a tiny southern part of Oakdale and then the southern part of uh, Maplewood. But I, um, I grew up, I've been a lifelong Minnesotan. I grew up in uh, Cloquet, Minnesota. Um, and I uh, have lived in Minnesota my whole life uh, with the exception of a, a brief stint in River Falls where I went to college. Um, my wife and I have lived in the uh, Maplewood Woodbury area since 2003. Uh, I have two boys that attend the Woodbury schools and my non-political job is I um, sell uh, software to uh, colleges and universities. So I've had lots of experience in the private sector and um, I've sort of been called to, uh, called to serve and I um, am, am running for the state house, and I'm excited for the opportunity. When you went to River Falls, what did you major in? Uh, broadcast journalism, actually. Oh. So I, I quickly changed to so speech So you're after my job now. I am, so <laughs> if we could get, I mean, we could see who we could get rid of. But no, I, uh, I uh, spent uh, the mid-90s there, and I, I was happy with it. What got you into sales? You know, it's a ability to connect to people. Um, you know, I've always thought that if I, you know, whatever my message is or whatever my product is, uh, is if I can take a, a keen knowledge of whatever my product is, given you know politics or, you know, X Y Z widget, and convey its its benefits and its values to the needs of whoever I'm talking to. I, I mean, I, I like the ability to do that. So obviously there's a big uh, correlation, if you will, between you know, some of the sales and, and some of politics in terms of messaging and, and expring, expressing and, and convening that your product or your service or your ideals are the best overall. Now, I always ask a guest on this program one personal question, and that personal question stays the same no matter who the... Uh, person is and right. this is the opportunity because this is what I think really gets you get to know somebody and when you were a young child and it was Christmas time what was your favorite Christmas present oh uh, well that's pretty easy I uh, I'm a musician um, and so one of my hobbies is I play in a band and one year um, late well it was Santa but uh, one year and I found out later obviously you know uh, there was a, a Fender amplifier uh, that uh, my dad ended up finding on, you know, on uh, the classified ads or something like that, and that was something that uh, Christmas morning I still remember it. It was a, a Fender bassman head and bottom, and uh, I I loved it. I still have it actually. So uh, you're you're in a band. Tell us about the band. Uh, I play in a cover band, um, so we play like you know bars and weddings and stuff like that, and it uh, it keeps me busy. It keeps me busy. I, you know, I, music's always been a part of my life, and so I, uh, you know, anytime I can can uh, stay keep that as part of my life is uh, I look forward to each and every gig. I'll so now right at, at, at the close of every legislative session, now it just seems that the Democrats in the House like to sing Purple Rain on the floor. This has happened like the last two years. So if you get elected, will you change that tune a little bit or will you just join in with Purple Rain? Mm, probably we are the champions. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, tell me, why are you running for state representative? Well, I mean, there's an overall philosophy that I, I think is pervasive in Minnesota and it's, it's not getting any better. So, I mean, my, my primary concern for why I'm running is I'm concerned about our state spending. You know, um, Minnesotans, we enjoy a great quality of life and um, I, I look at and I knock on some of the doors and these messages are conveyed to me too. Um, Minnesotans are worried that our, it's becoming more and more difficult to be a Minnesotan, you know, for, you know, your taxes and, and you know, the quality of life and things are, things are being pinched economically and we need to, we need to keep our 
um, fiscal restraints in order. So I'm concerned about the spending. That's why I'm running. I think I, I can convey a message of fiscal responsibility at the state capitol and get people to embrace that because we are having, you know, the, the trends that, we're, that we have with state spending, they're, they're increasing faster than our wages are. And sooner or later, that's going to be a problem. According to your website, you do mention uh, responsible spending, uh, rising costs of basic items like food and health care, leaving Minnesotans with less discretionary income, mm -hmm. yet state government spending continues to grow unchecked. What are some of the wasteful programs that you would like to see eliminated or reformed? Well, there, I'm, obviously there are a, a lot that you could you know, point your finger to, but the, the ones that you see that grab all the headlines, I mean, uh, when, you, when you look at programs like our, our Minsure healthcare delivery system, I mean, that's a good one in terms of you know, rolling out uh, devices in terms of that, that was a website that didn't work, and the debacle with our vehicle registration system, you know, the MinLars, um, and then now more recently has been the, you know, the, the wasteful uh, spending or the, the fr blatant fraud actually with some of the child care reimbursements. And these aren't, you know, this isn't a pittance or these aren't crumbs as Nancy Pelosi would say. You know, these are, in, that, in the case of the health care or the child care, that's a hundred million dollars. And it, you know, that was uncovered basically uh, as a matter of happenstance, uh, you know, by the Channel 9 news team. So, you know, these are these are fairly concrete examples. It's not arbitrary. It's not abstract. You can say, you know, look at these examples. This is just this is indicative of a, a greater problem of wasteful spending, and it's something that has to be addressed. Now, also on your website, you mentioned local control. Can you give us? Absolutely. I, I think the most effective government is the government that is closest to your front door. Um, so if there's a city issue or a school, um, you know, school levy or a referendum or even school board decisions, they should be able to make their decisions you know, f without in too much intervention from the state government. That's the beauty of our system of government is that you know, there should be little experiment labs for whichever is the best way to do it. And then they can model each other. So if Egan has a better delivery system for their uh, schools, then others can, can mirror it. And the same goes for the states versus the federal government. You know, I believe uh, very much in the Tenth Amendment where, you know, basically if it's uh, not in the Constitution, it's up to the states to decide what they want to do. So there should be very little federal intervention when it comes to state matters and very little state intervention when it comes to local uh, matter. So that's my overall philosophy when it comes to that. So in other words, the pursuit of happiness? <laughs> yes. If you had to boil it down to a, a few words, yes, exactly. And then your opponent appears to be Tu Zhang, the yes. Maplewood City Council member. Yep. Uh, how do you and Tu Zhang contrast? Well, I think overall, and you hate to boil it down to this, but it's um, it's become very much a team game, you know. So uh, you know, the Republicans have you know their vision, and and the then the Democrats have theirs, and you know, in terms of policy specifics, I, I haven't. Um, you know, I haven't sat down to go over, you know, it's, I'm not running against an incumbent. I don't have a voting record on state matters to, you know, to kind of uh, to point and counterpoint against. But overall, you are seeing a pretty, you know, a pretty toe the line effort on Democrats in general to follow Governor Dayton's lead, whatever that is. And so I, I think that that needs to be the main area of focus. I mean, obviously, there are issues that, as a Republican, I'd want to challenge my Republican colleagues to. But you know, when you look at the direction that our state needs to take, um, certainly the, of the two parties, the more fiscally responsible message is coming from the Republicans, and I, I tend to focus on that. And then, for anybody who wants to get involved with your campaign, how's the? What's the easiest way to contact you? Uh, well, I have a website, believe it or not. Uh, and, I believe it. Well, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. We're on the Facebooks and, inter and interwebs and everything. Uh, my website address is um, 53A, which would be the district and my f first initial of my name. So 53A Tironi, T-U-R-O-N-I-E, uh, dot com. And there's a volunteer registration site there. And um, the, uh, you can email me at the same uh, 53 a Tironi at Gmail, and um, I'd love to. We've got a parade actually coming up in uh, Oakdale Summerfest. That's on uh, the 21st, and we're always looking for people there um, for that. And any, you know, obviously, uh, people to help drop literature or knock doors or you know campaign contributions. It's you know it, it will be uh, you know the incumbent is a Democrat, so it's it's a light blue district, and I'll need uh, as much help as I can get. 
And Andy, I want to say thank you again for joining us at North Star Oasis. Thank and you. And you'll have to come back to be and here. give us an update uh, sometime after the August 14th primary. Yes, so. I do have a primary challenger. So um, that's, that's step one. And uh, hopefully after that, we can uh, revisit this because it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Andy.